As darkness falls over lush jungles and icy tundra, creatures of all sizes gather together for safety. Because the world they live in is harsh and cruel, filled with mysteries, mayhem, and of course, monsters. These monstrous creatures from the mind of Gendi Tartakovsky take many shapes and forms. This is the fauna of Primal. Primal is home to a multitude of terrifying and powerful creatures. <laughs> but few match the sheer tenacity and ferocity of Spear and Fang, the titular characters. Spear is no ordinary human, instead he's a Neanderthal, and though he shares many qualities with us, he also has many qualities separate from us. Spear displays advanced survival qualities like a higher muscle density. This allows him incredible feats of strength like dragging Fang by himself, breaking a Tyrannosaur's leg with a rock, and throwing his spear straight through solid objects. Spear is far more agile and quick than you would expect and is capable of great speed when running, climbing, or even swimming. On top of that, he has far more stamina than a regular human and he rarely gets tired and if he does, it's not for very long. These nearly superhuman abilities allow him to climb near vertical surfaces like trees or cliffs with little to no support. And as I said earlier, it also makes him far more durable and tolerant of pain. And it helps him to shrug off blows from opponents far more powerful than he is. And of course, Spear's main advantage, like most Neanderthals and humans, is his intelligence. Because of this, like humans, nearly anything he picks up can and will become a weapon if needed. This all- Fang is a green and blue adult Tyrannosaurus Rex, and she likely got this color from the area she lived in. She also has one unusually large tooth, which has given her a bit of an odd jaw structure. Why she's smaller than normal Tyrannosaurs is unknown, but it seems that most Tyrannosaurs in the series are around her size, if not a little bit larger. However, don't let her size fool you because she's a more than capable hunter and fighter. Like all members of her species, she has an excellent sense of smell and vision, allowing her to track and hunt prey far more effectively than most large predators. She has been shown to be far stronger than she appears, capable of ripping off heads, jaws, and other vital organs from similarly sized or even larger opponents. Some folks have even theorized that her unusual jaw structure and tooth gives her an enhanced bite force, however this has never been confirmed. Regardless, her bites have been shown to deal grievous wounds to even the strongest of foes. As for small creatures, they have nearly nothing they can do against her jaws, and she can even bite most of them in half. As you'd expect from a Tyrannosaur, she's incredibly durable, but not overly so. She can most certainly be wounded, but most of the time, this doesn't even slow her down. Much like Spear, Fang's most incredible trait is her intelligence. Not only was she able to form a bond with Spear, but they have a form of rudimentary communication with one another as well. She's even capable of learning, as shown when she watches Spear do some attacks and then copies and mimics those same attacks. She's also capable of detecting threats as well as warning Spear and other allies about said threat. These traits allow Spear and Fang to be a lethal and incredible duo, and they need every advantage they can get in this harsh world. One of the earliest threats is found by Spear while fishing. A massive crocodilian, likely Dinosuchus, leaped out of the water to try and eat him. While it didn't succeed, and this is the first and last time we saw it, it introduced us to the terrors this world had to offer. Another early threat that we don't see much of is this unnamed pterosaur. This pterosaur has a body plan similar to as Darkids like Quetzalcoatlus, but it has a crest more similar to animals like Pteranodon. But just like the Dinosuchus, it only appears briefly to scare Spear into hiding before taking off again. However, the first real threat we're introduced to is this pack of horned pteranosaurs. These voracious predators are pack hunters, and they also have several traits that set them apart from Fang. Most notably, they all have a large horn taking up the front of their face. These horns seem to be unique among individuals and have a variety of shapes and sizes dependent on the Tyrannosaur. These Tyrannosaurs also seemed less intelligent than Fang, as they acted more rashly and out of anger. One member of this group was shown to have reached an enormous size, even larger than Tyrannosaurus rex in real life. This vicious pack likely terrorized many creatures in their time before they were put down by both Spear and Fang. This next species wasn't actually a threat to our hero world. Enter the Mega Snake and its Swarm. This was a massive, fanged aquatic snake that was easily twice the length of fang. It superficially resembles large snakes like boas and pythons, however it has fangs unlike those species. And it had an oddly powerful bite force for a snake, able to snap a tree in two. With all the abilities of a snake and more, this made for a deadly opponent for our heroes. These next creatures are one of the few that Spear and Fang actually couldn't defeat over the course of their adventures. 
These are Primal's woolly mammoths, and I'm sure you've noticed their enormous size. They seem to be quite a bit larger than normal mammoths, dwarfing both spear and fang. Much like modern elephants, these mammoths were quite intelligent and were able to keep track and take care of one another. They were incredibly social animals and were led by a matriarch, also similar to modern day elephants. These mammoths also boast incredible strength, and even an old, sick, and dying member was able to put up a decent fight with spear and fang. These mammoths are also mournful as they take their fallen to a graveyard. This can also lead to them being vengeful as they tracked Spear and Fang for about a day to find their fallen member's tusk. And in the end, the only reason Spear and Fang survive is because they gave the mammoths what they wanted a powerful and complex species. During this same episode, we also find a group of scavengers known as fanged wolves, which some people refer to as dire wolves. These wolves appear briefly to scavenge the corpse of a mammoth after Spear and Fang hunt it down, and may have adapted these saber teeth specifically for that. Fangs like that may have assisted them in tearing open carcasses that were already frozen. A curious little critter. In a flashback, we're also introduced to another prey animal in this world, Cyndioceras. The real-life animal is more close to the size of a goat, but this one is actually the size of a moose in the show. Though it seems that that size didn't make it too much more for to spear and fang on their own, as a whole pack they were nearly unstoppable. However, they kind of needed those numbers, because they had some pretty bitter rivals. Their rivals are these creatures, known simply as man-bats. These huge, crimson-colored bats were almost the size of dinosaurs, and two of them together were capable of lifting fang. They have an oddly humanoid physique, which is where they get the name man-bats. Like the raptors, these bats are social and able to communicate with one another. This has led them to compete with the raptors for food over time. These bats are incredibly fast creatures and are even able to catch up to Fang after she's been running for quite some time. However, while they're powerful in numbers, individuals aren't too strong on their own. But these bats have a trick up their sleeve that allows them to survive much longer and easier than normal. The ace up their sleeve was this gigantic spider, known only as the Mega Spider. This gigantic creature was around the same size and possibly even larger than the woolly mammoths. In exchange for being fed by the bats, the spider would store their food by wrapping silk around them. This allowed the man-bats to keep their population fed for an extended period of time, which allowed them to boom into enormous numbers. In addition, the spider kind of served to guard all of their kills. Each of this spider's legs are tipped with large, claw-like appendages that can grab and hold on to creatures and objects. And it's shown that each of these legs has enormous strength with the capability of lifting up Fang and bashing her against walls. It's also capable of shooting its webs from its mouth instead of its rear like normal spiders. And while this ability is never really shown on screen, it is thought to be venomous because of the green liquid dripping from its fangs during its introduction. Now that's what I call a creepy crawly. During the same episode, we're also introduced to these humanoid looking creatures, which is thought to be Homo erectus. Alright, now quit laughing and get your mind out of the gutter. They were shorter in height and less evolved than Spear was, and not quite as intelligent as him either. They lived in the same territory as the man-bats and hid in a system of underground caves to protect themselves. Because of their life underground, many members of the species appear to be very gangly, pale, and sickly. Their arms are also noticeably long, allowing them to knuckle-walk like gorillas. And while we don't know much about them beyond that, they're still a curious group of creatures. But they weren't the only semi-intelligent humanoid-like creatures either. These are the Ape Men, a group of humanoid primates. Despite their ape-like appearance, these guys actually had a culture and a society led by a shaman-like leader. Their society seems to have two main groups, the smaller and weaker, more monkey-like ape men, and then the bigger, more gorilla-like ones. These smaller, more monkey-like ape men were far more numerous than their larger brethren. They were also far more agile and carried out the more mundane tasks of the tribe. Their gorilla-like brethren were far stronger and less numerous and served as the tribe's warriors. Together, they form a society that's capable of crafting tools, clothing, and architecture. They also had some odd ritual-like ceremony that involved kidnapping other creatures. After they kidnap what they believe is a worthy adversary, their strongest warriors will gather in an arena to fight for the right to kill them. The winner of their tournament is given a drop of some odd enhancement liquid that causes them to become much stronger. A single drop nearly allowed one of them to beat Fang almost unscathed. 
and if it wasn't for Spear, they would have killed her. Spear does this by consuming all of their liquid after breaking himself free. Like the Ape Men, this gives him increased strength, speed, and rage, and causes him to wipe out their entire tribe. A very odd and strangely powerful society. Immediately following Spear's annihilation of the Ape Men, we're introduced to the Teratornus Vulture. These large vultures had a wingspan of up to 12 feet, nearly 4 meters long. And with their hooked beaks in large numbers, they could definitely pose a threat to an injured or dying animal. But like most predators, they'll always go for the easier meal. Another far more dangerous scavenger are these prehistoric wild dogs. These animals very closely resemble African painted dogs. They are incredibly patient and will track a wounded animal for miles while they muster their numbers. And with their red, beady eyes, they can make for a haunting image in the night. Once they're confident their numbers will overwhelm their prey, they'll attack relentlessly. And between their overwhelming numbers and sheer tenacity, they can be hard to overcome. But Spear actually used this next animal to defeat them. These are a group of carnivorous, armored bugs. They attack and attempt to feed on any creature entering their cave by swarming over them. They range in size from as small as a cockroach to as large as a horseshoe crab. And all over their armored back, they possess large spikes, making it difficult to crush them. This species only real weak point is their undersides. And after learning how to kill them, he used their corpses to fight off the wild dogs with their armored spikes. Spear's a clever lad, after all. The next creature Primal introduces to was this peaceful group of Argentinosaurus. These massive sauropods can reach over 100 feet or 30 meters in length. They seem to prefer the fruits in the forest near their nesting sites, and were rather peaceful animals overall. Unfortunately, that changed after one was bitten by an infected hadrosaur. Despite that hadrosaur's quick death, his victim quickly became a threat to the rest of his herd. Heard. Whatever the infection did, it causes this Argentinosaurus to have no regard for its own personal safety or that of anything around it. Its strength, speed, and agility all seem to increase dramatically, and it's driven by pure unbridled rage and bloodlust. This was one of the only creatures that Spear and Fang didn't even try to fight. They did the only reasonable thing you can do run. The next group we're introduced to is this group of witches known as the Coven. The Coven was a group of all-female humanoids, likely related to Neanderthals like Spear. This Coven has quite the wide array of magic that makes them a very serious threat. Firstly, they're capable of mind-controlling other creatures, such as Fang and this Pterosaur. They're also capable of pausing time and using that time to look into other creatures' memories. They're also capable of shapeshifting, and it seems that each witch has a unique transformation. This includes both a giant wolf and a giant raven. Instead of the normal method of procreation, these guys use ritualistic magic. By sacrificing another humanoid, usually a Neanderthal, they can create a baby, allowing their numbers to remain consistently replenished. This next creature was only seen briefly, unfortunately. This is Smilodon, a usually keen and cunning predator. Unfortunately, we don't really get to see it in action very much, because its time is cut short in its first appearance by a much more dangerous foe. Another group of animals whose time was also cut short by the same foe were these Ceratopsians. To any standard foe, these Ceratopsians would make a formidable adversary. However, despite their incredible bulk, frills, and horns, they were no match for the next creature on our list. This is the Night Feeder. This monstrous creature remained unseen for a majority of the episode, but we do manage to deduce a few details. It was a theropod dinosaur around the same size as Fang, and it boasted incredibly long, powerful, and sharp claws. While it isn't ever revealed exactly what this dinosaur is, my thoughts are that it's a mega raptorid of some sort. However, no matter what species it was, this creature moved at unnaturally fast speeds. This creature maintains incredible momentum, even when slicing through incredibly tough material like tree trunks or ceratopsy. This creature is also unnaturally aggressive, killing for fun or sport. This creature was specially adapted to hunting at night, able to see much better than most other creatures. Much of this creature's personality and abilities may come from the odd black tar-like substance covering its body. This goo protects the creature and allows it to shrug off most physical blows. It has been theorized by fans that this goo is the same liquid spear drink to enhance himself. However, that's never been confirmed, so we don't know for sure. But you don't know for sure! Oh, by the way, the creature that's believed to have been mutated by the goo would have been this little compi. He's an adorable little guy, and he only appears very briefly, so give him some love. Oh, also, I didn't mention this, but the Night Feeder does have a weakness. The Night Feeder is photophobic, meaning it's afraid of light. And that gooey, tar-like substance that covers its body? Turns out it's flammable. An incredibly powerful creature with such a simple weakness. Oddly, the species we're introduced to immediately following the Night Feeder is actually us. 
This is Mira, and she's a homo sapien, meaning she's a regular human just like you and I. Except, unlike us, she has to survive in the wild on a daily basis. However, unlike Spear, she's not entirely primitive. Her society has culture and even a language. And due to their gathering lifestyle, they're incredibly flexible and agile humans. And just like most humans, she brings more intelligence to the table than most other creatures. On top of that, their civilization has evolved enough that they have a religion. Mira has been shown to worship the moon like a god or goddess. And together, they make a brilliant addition to the show. Mira's introduction was also hailed by a large creature attacking the group. While they were fishing in what appeared to be peaceful waters, Spear and Fang first saw Mira swimming toward them in a panic. Behind her was this creature, a Leo Pluridon. Unlike most of this show's depictions, this animal is actually fairly accurate to its real-life counterpart. With long, crocodile-like jaws, this creature made a perfect ambush predator in the water. And the countershaded pattern, where it's darker on top and lighter on the bottom, would actually be an advantage when hunting. Countershading allows predators and prey alike some sort of camouflage in the water, making it much harder to see them from above or below. The Leo Pluridon uses this to its advantage when it first encounters Spear and Fang by ambushing Fang. But in the end, the Leo Pluridon stood no chance against our heroes. We are also very briefly introduced to a few more colorful and less dangerous creatures in this world. The first of these is a small Tapajara pterosaur. These tiny and beautiful creatures were extremely colorful, likely to help them with mating. Based on the size of this species, I'd say it's likely that they mostly ate insects or small shellfish. Another of the colorful and non-dangerous creatures is this oviraptorid named Anzu. Anzu is a mixture of purple and pink in coloration with a very bright purple crest on top. Just like the previous pterosaurs, this large oviraptor was only seen briefly as it was being hunted by Spear, Fang, and Mira. Another of these small, harmless creatures was this little theropod known as Lindra Dromius. These tiny, adorable little dinosaurs were covered in a coat of fluffy red feathers that fade down to orange on the tail. But that's all we really get to see from them, because they flee from Spear, Fang, and Mira immediately. Which, if the previous creature was to go by, wasn't a bad idea. The final creatures we're introduced to in the first season of the show are these, the Monkey Men. <laughs> These creatures are thought to represent Homo habilis, another ancient relative of humans. Though, if we're being completely candid here, they look definitely a lot more like mini yeti monkeys. However, these monkey men are fairly advanced themselves. Just like Spear, they're able to craft tools and weapons like axes, hammers, and, you guessed it, spears. And, like many primates outside of humans, they had incredible muscle density, giving them incredible strength. They were also remarkably intelligent, smart enough to come up with a plan to kidnap Mira. While a small group snuck in and stole Mira, a large group came in after to distract Spear and Fang. However, despite their strength and dexterity and intelligence with tools, they were no match for the duo. Spear and Fang overwhelmed them and drove them back, causing them to retreat. And the last we see of them is their corpses on the beach as Mira's slavers kidnap her again. They were a rather intriguing way to move the plot forward. But in the world of Primal, almost everything is untamed, and they would certainly not be the last. As you can see, Primal has a myriad of monsters to choose from, coming in all shapes and sizes. And that was just the first season. There's a whole nother season full of other monstrous creatures that we can cover. What creature were you most excited to see in this video? And what creature are you looking forward to seeing in the next? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton, way more than you know. Thank you all so very much for watching and to Gennady Tartakovsky for making such an amazing world. Remember to be good people and I'll see you guys in the next one.